Hello, everyone, and welcome to our show today. Today, we're going to be diving in. We're going to be talking about Dun & Bradstreet. We're going to be talking about actually exactly how you get started with Dun & Bradstreet, um, all the way from taking the initial steps from setting up your business uh, to going through and getting fleet and cash kind of credit. So we're going to walk through um, every stage of this process and teach you step by step exactly how this is done. So before we dive in, let me introduce myself. My name is Ty Crandall. I'm actually the CEO over here at Credit Suite. If you'd like to get in touch with us, feel free to reach out. We're, uh, our email address is info at Credit Suite. Com. Our phone number is 877-600-2487. And if you'd also like a free guide on building your business credit with even more details than we're going to cover here during the show, you can visit creditsuite.com uh, forward slash EIN. That's creditsuite, S-U-I-T-E dot com uh, forward slash EIN. And you can get a great free guide on building business credit. So uh, I've been doing this for a long time. You've maybe seen my videos. You've probably heard my podcast, those type of things. Uh, I know a little bit about building business credit, actually oversee a pretty large business credit building operation where we help a lot of companies obtain financing um, and build business credit. And everything I'm going to map out today is the exact process uh, that you need to walk through and that we walk through with clients to get set up with Dun & Bradstreet and to build business credit. Of course, we take a few extra steps because we're helping our clients get established with all three business credit reporting agencies as a lot of the steps we're going to go over today are exactly how you would go through this process with Dun & Bradstreet. So enough about me, enough about us. Let's dive in. So who is Dun & Bradstreet? Well, Dun & Bradstreet is often called DMB, um, and they're the biggest business credit reporting agency uh, that exists. They're by far about 10 times bigger than their next uh, next biggest competitor, which is Experian. So in the business credit reporting space, we have Experian, we have Equifax, we also have Dun & Bradstreet, and Dun & Bradstreet is the 100-pound uh, gorilla in the room. They are by far the biggest. Now, they provide information on business and corporations for use in credit decisions worldwide. You know, some people forget that this is what business credit reporting agencies do. What they do is they try to gather as much information about businesses as they can, and they sell that to people through any number of different products, whether it be marketing products, whether it be research products, um, all different kinds of reasons. They also um, sell that information, of course, for risk scoring and those type of things as well. So they are worldwide. They deal with businesses all over the world uh, to help determine risk, to gather information and offer this in a variety of different products and services. Services um, that they actually offer. Now, they're a publicly traded company. They actually trade under uh, the, the ticker DNB on the New York Stock Exchange. And they're headquartered in Short Hills, New Jersey. So uh, Dun & Bradstreet all, goes all the way back to about 1841. I'm not going to give you a bunch of history today. We're just going to jump into the actual nuts and bolts. But I'll tell you a couple of the basic things I think are cool that you should know. Uh, if you want the whole history on Dun & Bradstreet, uh, we, you can go to our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash credit suite. And you'll find tons of information we have on Dun & Bradstreet, including their entire history. But they were actually formed in 1841 as a company originally known as a mercantile agency. Now, it's important to note this was 50 years before the formation of Equifax. So the reason I say that is that there's still a lot of people out there that are skeptical about business credit uh, and, and not sure how it works or if it works. Well, the reality is, is that business credit reporting and scoring has been around you know, decades before consumer credit scoring even existed. And that's why I list that, you know, 50 years before Equifax, which was the first consumer reporting agency even showed up on the scene, a mercantile agency existed. So really business credit reporting roots track way back further than even consumer credit reporting does, which I always find to be interesting. And then in 1933, the mercantile agency joined with RG Dunn and company to become Dunn and Bradstreet. At that time, these two were very big competitors in the space. I tell you this, because if you ever look at the history of Dun & Bradstreet on their website, etc., you'll see that they were formed in 1933. Well, the reason they show 1933 as the formation date of their company is that that's when these two companies actually merged. But uh, Dun and, uh, RG Dun & Company and Mercantile Agency um, actually go all the way back to 1841. And this will be uh, probably one of the most important things that you'll also want to know as well is the universal, the Dun's number. The, the data universal numbering system, which we're going to talk about later, 
Elevator, How You Get It Done's number um, actually was created back in 1963. And we'll talk a little bit more about what this number is because it's definitely important for you to be able to build business credit. It's really the first step in building business credit with Dun & Bradstreet. So today, DMB has about 213 million uh, records on files for companies across the globe. And again, that's easily 10 times the amount of what they'll, you'll find with Experian. And this is the last thing I think to do here with history. I'm kind of a history buff, so I like to find interesting points like this. So it is pretty cool to know that four U.S. presidents were actually former employees of Mercantile Agency. Uh, actually, I think they worked as credit reporters, and that was Lincoln, Grant, Cleveland, um, and McKinley. So pretty interesting. I don't know of any other company uh, in the country that four U.S. presidents have worked for. So it kind of shows you the history of business credit done in Bradstreet um, all the way back to their roots. And again, they worked as credit reporters. So how do you set up your business? Well, the first thing we're going to talk about is that when you want to get set up with Dun & Bradstreet, the very, there's things you have to do before you even take that step. So in today's show, I'm going to walk you through literally from the idea of starting a business, what you need to do, where you need to go uh, to get set up, all the way through to getting cash credit, to getting fleet credit. So some of this in the early stage, I'm going to go through somewhat quickly because I know a lot of you on the call already have are established. You already have it in these set up. You already have some of these things set up, but I still think it's good information for you to make sure you've done it the right way. So many people come to us and have set up their bank account, their licensing, their website, all these types of things the right, wrong way, and then we have to go backwards, whereas now you're going to know the right way to do it all, to go all the way from the inception of your business through the actual process of getting cash and fleet credit. So the very first step with getting set up with Dun & Bradstreet is before you even do this, you have to set up your entity. Now, you can build credit with DMB with any entity, so it doesn't matter if you're a sole proprietorship, it doesn't matter if you are a corporation, an LLC, any entity you choose, you can go through with DMB and follow the steps I'm about to outline. But it is important to note that only a corporation or an LLC really reduce your personal liability. If you're a partnership, if you're a sole proprietorship, you're still personally liable for what happens in your actual business. So that's important to note um, because again, and hopefully everybody, let me just make sure here before I actually go any further. I want to make sure everybody can actually on my call see the screen. So make sure, go ahead and type in the chat real quick and just let me know if you're here on the live show, if you can see the screen because my monitors actually kind of got switched around here and I just want to make sure that you can actually see the slide. So if you don't mind, and uh, hello, Percy, hello, Crystal, and hello, Nathan. Thank you for saying hi. If you don't mind, real quick, just type in the chat yes or no if you can actually see the screen. I want to make sure everybody can see the screen uh, and then I'm going to go ahead. Yes. Okay, cool, Nathan. Thank you very much. All right, so corporation or LLC is where you go to eliminate or not eliminate but really reduce the liability. If you're a sole proprietor, if you're a partnership, you're going to be personally liable for what happens in your business. And why that is, is because you are the business, which means you and the business are looked at as one and the same. So if your business defaults on a credit card, you are personally liable. They'll come after your bank account, your bank assets. So if you don't want that, you want to separate the liability between your business, you really should consider getting in a corporation or LLC. Don't worry. If you're a sole proprietorship or partnership, you can always switch over to a corporation or LLC. LLC, but you really want to consider that even though you can build business credit with Dun & Bradstreet through any, any, any actual entity, it's still good to have that separation of liability. With these entities, you and the business are separate from each other, so it makes it easier for you to separate your liability, which is why you want to go with a corporation or an LLC. Now, you can set up your entity by visiting your Secretary of State website, okay, and you can search for the name you want um, to ensure it's not already taken, and then follow the steps to set up a new for-profit or non-profit business. So you can go through LegalZoom. There's a lot of companies that will help you set up an entity, but I got to tell you, it's super easy. Okay, in Florida, we go through a site called sunbiz.org. It's ridiculously simple. It takes about five minutes to set up an entity and costs me like $60. Now in California, it might cost $600 to set up a corporation. So the cost to set up the entity varies by state, but it's still much cheaper for you to go right to your Secretary of State website to do this versus actually going through any other service that you have to pay. Um, fees vary by state, but the setup process usually only takes about 15 or minutes to complete. And this is a website you want to write down because I just created this actually last week for uh, when I thought about doing this webinar. And the reason I did this is because 
I, I don't know why it took me so long to do this. So many people ask me, how do I set up my entity? How do I do all these things that we're going to talk about during today's show? And I thought, well, you know what? How do I get listed with 411? How do I do this? So I created one page that you can go to that maps out all these things. There's links that you can actually click on one link, and then it will give you a list of every single secretary of state in the country. So you can go through, if you're in Alabama or Florida or Georgia or California, you can click on your state and get to your secretary of state. You don't even have to look. So everything's available on this one site. It's creditsuite.com forward slash setup dash your dash business. That's creditsuite.com forward slash setup dash your dash business. And right there on that page, you can actually access a link to get yourself set up with your secretary of state or go right to your secretary of state website if you know that address or Google that address. So the next thing you want to do is you want to visit your IRS website to get your employer identification number, your EIN number. Now, do not pay for this EIN number. It's totally free. You don't have to pay for the EIN. We already talked about your entity setup. That's going to vary based on your state, but your EIN doesn't cost you anything. There are companies who try to look official and help you get your EIN, but at the end of the process, they'll charge you a fee, and you don't need to pay for your EIN. So never feel like you go to a website that looks like it's irs.gov. irs.gov is the only place you go to get your EIN for free. Um, if you go anywhere else that looks like an official government website, they'll charge you at the end of the process. You should never have to pay for that. And here's an example. And again, I'm not trying to say this is a bad company or not, but when I searched how to set up my EIN, then this is a page that came up, ein-gov.us. It looks official, but this is actually a company that would charge me to set up my EIN. So this is kind of even what this will look like on a Google search. So you don't want to go through a company that's going to charge you for your EIN. Instead, you want to make sure that you go through irs.gov where it actually costs you nothing to get set up. And again, I set a link up where you could go right to get your EIN on that creditsuite.com forward slash setup dash your dash business where you can click once and it takes you right to the page where you set up your EIN so you don't have to get lost and go to a company that may charge you. Now, your next step is to actually set up your DMB Dunn's number. I'm sorry that all came up at once. So the next step in the process is you want to set up your Dunn's number. Now, this can also be obtained for free from Dunn and Bradstreet directly, um, or again, you can use that shortcut, creditsuite.com forward slash setup dash your dash business. Now, I have no affiliation at all with Dunn and Bradstreet, and so it makes no difference if you go to our website to click to get to their link or go to them directly. All I did was on this page just put a link, a shortcut link where you can go right into Dunn and Bradstreet's website to set up your Dunn's number. Now, the Dunn's number, again, is that data universal numbering system we talked about. It's a business identifier code provided by Dunn and Bradstreet. This is different than the EIN. Your EIN is how our our government in the United States recognizes your business. It's kind of like your social. Your social security number is how our government recognizes you as an individual in this country, and your EIN number is how our government, the IRS, recognize your business in this country. The Dunn's number is a universal number. So companies in Australia use this number. Companies in the United States, the United Nations, this is used all over the world. It's not what your business credit's linked to, but it's required to even get started with building your business credit with Dun and Bradstreet. So the Dun's number is a nine-digit number issued by DMB, and it's assigned to every business location in their database that has a unique, separate, and distinct operation. So what this means is it means you don't ever want to go into an office. And somebody asked me the other day, they said, we have I work out of a shared space where there's a bunch of us that work in one space. Well, you know, does that create a problem? I said, absolutely, it creates a problem because your Dunn's number and your credit profile is often linked to your business address. So if you have 15 businesses at the same address, your guys' credit information can easily get mixed up with each other. So then he took the step with working with the post office to get separate unit numbers within their location, and that would work. You've got to make sure that you're using a unique address just for your business to get your Dunn's number set up because they will often merge your information or it's possible to merge your information with another company's information um, if you try to use an address that's already occupied somebody else. Every business must first have a Dunn's number before DMB will assign you a Paydex score. We'll talk more about the Paydex score, but if you want a business credit score with DMB, then what will happen is 
you will need to make sure um, that you have the Dunn's number set up before you do that. Okay, the Dunn's number is the preferred method worldwide, again, as I mentioned, for identifying a business. Okay, this isn't like the EIN that has to do with only um, in the United States. And it's also used by a lot of foreign governments, Australia, European Commission, even the United Nations. There's about 50 global industry and trade associations that recognize and recommend the Dunn's. So again, you just need to know uh, this Dunn's number is a worldwide identifier for your number. You've got to do it as one of the initial steps to get set up with Dun & Bradstreet. Now, some important notes. When you actually start applying for credit, as we'll get into here in the future a little bit as we get further into the show, well, then you've got to consider using some kind of business address or virtual address. You can't use a home address. You can't use a UPS address or PO box when it comes time to apply for credit. Okay, But when you set up your entity, when you set up your DUNS, they're going to require a real physical address. A virtual address will not work. So I get this question a lot because I preach, look, you can't use a home address on credit applications. And then people come to me and leave comments on our videos or email me and say, listen, well, I don't understand because if that's the case, how am I supposed to get my DUNS number? My DUNS number requires a physical address. A virtual address won't work. You need to real use a real address when you're applying for your DUNS, whether it be a business address, home address, PO box, UPS address, but they're not going to accept the virtual address. So you need to know that because again, it doesn't matter what you use when you apply for your DUNS. What matters is what's on your physical application, but they will not accept a virtual address. Um, and, you can, and even though you can obtain real business credit without supplying your social, most business bank accounts may also require uh, that you pro provide your actual social to get set up. Another question I'm asked, because again, what I'm going to teach you today is how to get business credit without using your social security number on the application. So a lot of people say, okay, that's fantastic. And they take the initial step of setting up their bank account and their bank actually requires their social. That's okay. Your bank might require actual social and it's okay if they do. What matters is that you don't put the social on the actual application. When it comes time for you to apply for credit, if you do put the social security number on the application when you apply for credit, then you're going to provide a personal guarantee, which you don't want. But using it when you open your bank account is often required, depending on the bank that you're actually with. So make sure you have all you need to get to the actual next step, to start getting credit. So you've got to have that business entity set up. Could vary from 500 to 650 bucks, depending on the state you're in. You've got to have the EIN number. Again, that's free if you go to irs.gov. You've got to have your business bank account open cost maybe $25 to $50 to open up your initial business bank account. You need to have your Dunn's number obtained from Dun & Bradstreet. Again, that Dunn's number is free. Okay, once you have those things set up, then you have what you need to start building your actual business credit. So the next step is to set up a credible business. Now, credit issuers and lenders have this secret set of requirements that you've got to meet to start getting approved for real credit. These requirements are to determine if your business is legit and credible in their eyes. Now, I call these secret requirements with like, I'm doing quotations with my fingers right now, if you could see me, but I'm just saying that because these are not published anywhere. Bankers are not allowed to tell you this information. They'll get fired. Like a business banker cannot tell you why your application got denied or they could lose their job um, and often will lose their job. So these aren't published anywhere. Credit issuers won't tell you what their standards are. Banks won't tell you. Uh, but they do have the same set of standards that you must meet to get approved. And you've got to make ensure, and that ensure on this slide should be E instead of I, you must ensure that you meet these requirements before applying for any type of credit. If you don't set up your business credibly, you're going to get denied. And then everything we're about, I'm about to teach you won't work. And then you'll say, why did I get denied? Because you didn't set up your business credibly. You've got to meet these credit issuer and lender standards so you can get approved. So one of the standards is you've got to have a website, professional email address. You can't have a Gmail address. You can't have an AOL address. Look, I have a personal Gmail address, but I never would use that on a business application. I use my business email address on the application. And Info at creditsuite.com is what I'm going to use on the application. So nowadays, you can go to GoDaddy, and I use GoDaddy, so I recommend it. You can go anywhere. There's a lot of places that offer it. You can get a domain that comes with email addresses for like 7 to $12. It's very cheap. So you need to have a professional email address. You need to have a professional website. Our website's creditsuite.com. My email address is info at creditsuite.com. So because of that, that's consistent, and it's very cheap to get set up. 
you need to have a real legitimate website. Now, don't worry. This isn't actually expensive at all. If you don't want to work with an expensive web developer, which for the record, I do recommend, okay, as you get to, to become a really established company, a website might cost you five to 25,000. That's what we spent for our website. But in the beginning, we didn't start with a $20,000 website. We started with something really cheap until we made the revenue to get a website. Something I see a lot of people mess up in a business. You don't need to go spend thousands or tens of thousands of dollars on an expensive website as you're getting started. You can get a good website for much cheaper than that. And then as you start bringing in a lot of revenue, you can upgrade your website. So I use and like to go to a place called Monster template.com. There's a lot of places like Monster Template that sell website templates for $50 to $100. Then you can go to a site called Upwork.com, hire somebody that knows how to put up websites for even less, about 100 bucks. So for like $150 to $200, you could have somebody put up your website and you could actually have a really nice looking website. You buy the website template from a place like MonsterTemplate.com. You basically look at the template, you write out all the content you want on each of of your pages. You give the content and the template to somebody that knows how to put it all together. They put it online when you have a URL from GoDaddy, which again costs very little money and voila, you have a really nice professional website. Website template for 50, 100 bucks like monstertemplate.com. Website domain for very cheap, seven to 12 bucks from GoDaddy. Uh, and then the next thing is you just write out the content you want on your website and that can get done for you very, very cheaply. So you need to make sure that you take those steps to have a professional website. You must have a business phone number. Can't be a mobile phone, can't be a home phone. When you start applying on business applications, if you use a mobile or home phone, you'll get red flagged. They'll shut you down. You can use a an online virtual phone. You can use a Ring Fit Central phone. You can use these other type of formats that are business lines that are virtual. You just can't use a mobile or home phone. In our finance suite, which is a system uh, that customers buy from us to be able to buy business credit and work with our advisor team, we have a check for this where we look and if you enter a mobile or home phone, we won't even let you proceed in your application until you enter a real business phone. I tell you this because we use the exact same technology lenders use. This technology exists where they're going to easily we know if you're using a home phone or mobile phone, and if you do, you'll get denied when you start applying for credit. You need to have a toll-free number and a fax number. Nowadays, you can go to Ring Central and for 10 or 15 bucks a month, get a phone number and a fax and a toll-free number um, for very little, like I said, 10, 15 bucks a month. In our case, our, our toll-free number is our fax number as well. So it's very cheap to get stuff like this done. I say Ring Central because that's who we use. You can use all kinds of virtual phone providers to set up a phone, but you've got to have a toll-free free number. you got to make sure that you have a fax number because these questions are going to be asked on the application. And you don't want to leave things on your application blank like websites and fax numbers because it just makes you look unestablished. You need to look established to start getting approved for credit. Your phone needs to be listed with 411. Um, and that, again, is more difficult than you think it is to do. Uh, we use a company called List Yourself. And if you go to that site that I mentioned earlier, which I'll mention again a couple times throughout the show, we also have a link right there that you can click and go right to the place where you can get listed with 411 as well. And you should be listed online and all of your listings be the actual same. And again, on that link, which I'm not sure if it comes up here on this slide or not, there it is, creditsuite.com forward slash setup dash your dash business. I have a link there for you to go right to where you get your 411 set up and a link to right where you go uh, to get your listing set up or actually, excuse me, excuse me, a link to a YouTube video on our channel that maps out a bunch of different places you could set up your business. You don't have to set up your business at 100 places online, but credit issuers and lenders will often look to see if you are online and you exist in some of these databases. So it's not a bad idea to go to Bing Business, you know, for example, to go to you know Yahoo and Google Business, which they all have places where you can establish and set up your business. It's not a bad idea to go set up your business in these places. It's free. It gives you free advertising, free marketing, free promotion. Um, you're easy to find for customers, potential customers and clients. You're also easy to find for credit issuers and lenders. So again, I put a link on this page, creditsuite.com forward slash setup dash your dash business, where you can get the 411 and uh, watch a video about all the different places you could go to get set up. You really should go through that webinar because that's worth at least knowing all of the different places you can go to um, to get your business listed, most of which cost you little to very no money whatsoever to get set up. 
So you need a real business address or a virtual address, not a home address, PO box, or UPS address. Look, again, our finance suite uses the same technology lenders use. We won't even let you proceed in our system if you're using, actually, let me go back. I want to tell you something else. When it comes to listing your number with 411, forgot to mention there is a charge for that they'll charge you 25 dollars or 30 bucks a month um to list yourself i do not recommend list yourself because i get paid anything for telling you to use them i get nothing okay the link that goes right to their website there's no affiliate commission i don't make money by sending you there i'm sending you there because that's the only place i even know of that you can go to get listed with 411 it's the same service we use for our clients we just pay for that service for our clients so if you're already a client, you already know that, you go through our finance suite, you get listed with 411 at no cost. Even we pay to get our clients listed. So you do have to pay a fee to get listed with List Yourself. If you ever find a better, more effective way to do it, let me know. I'm all ears. I love a free way for us, us and our clients and everybody else that I teach on this. But today, all we've ever found is a paid service to get your number listed successfully with 411, and that's called List Yourself. Now, don't get me wrong. Okay, 411 eventually will discover your business. You'll get so, you'll have so much establishment out there that they'll find you. But if you don't want to wait for that to naturally and organically happen, which could take months or years, depending on where you're listed, well, then that's when List Yourself will come in. So you need a real business address. You cannot use a PO box, UPS, and home address. Again, our system uses the same technology lenders use. We easily know if you're trying to use a P.O. box, UPS, or home address. If you do it, it makes you look unestablished. Now, people ask me, look, what if I have a home daycare? What if I have um, a business I run from the home? It's okay to have a business run from your home. Just know that if you ever put a home address on a business application for credit, they're going to know it's a home address, and that alone can get you denied with a lot of different sources. So we use a virtual address or recommend a virtual virtual address company called Regis, which is fantastic for this, uh, but just know that you really need to have a virtual address or a physical business address to start applying for credit. What happens if you don't? Well, I'll tell you what's going to happen if you don't. Some sources will still approve you and other sources won't. So so it just comes down to you. If you want the best way to set up your business credibly, where you have the best chance of getting financing um, and credit, then what you want to do is you want to use a virtual address. If you don't, you may have some sources that actually will deny you because you're using anything other than a virtual address or physical address. So, and, and just so you know what a virtual address is, a virtual address is where you basically rent a mailbox from a real physical business. So they give you... You know, you're at 111 Tampa Street Road in Tampa, um, and then Box 101 or, you know, Suite 101. Well, you don't actually physically have a location there. You're renting the mailbox that you can use on applications. You get mail there. They forward you the mail. That's how a virtual address works. So you could use a real physical address, uh, but at the exact same time, you are not – um, actually using a home address, which would easily get you denied. You need to make sure you have all the necessary licensing needed for your industry, your county, and your state, and that varies based on industry, county, and state. You should be listed online, and all of your listings need to be the same. So we are Credit Suite, um, and you will find all of our information everywhere as Credit Suite. We're not Credit Suite doing business as XYZ. If we were Credit Suite doing business as XYZ, we need to make sure that's uniform everywhere. So you need to make sure the same business information you have listed in one place is the same everywhere else. Why is this important? Because believe it or not, one of the most re biggest reasons on why people get denied for credit and financing, and this blows my mind, but in talking to business bankers, one of the biggest reasons a business gets denied is because they submit an application. The first thing the business banker does is searches online to find the company. They find a bunch of different listings of variants of that company's name. They can't figure out which one the company actually is application denied. And that blows my mind. It might take you a month to gather all of your documents to get an SBA loan. And for you to get denied because they did a search and re couldn't really figure out which your business, which business was yours, and they deny you and never even tell you that's the reason for the denial, you can imagine how frustrating that would be if they did tell you. But they won't tell you. And that's one of the most common reasons business bankers tell me applications are denied because the person has so many different variants of their name they're putting out there that when the banker goes to try to find that business online, they can't. This is 
is why all this stuff needs to be uniform. And again, creditsuite.com forward slash setup dash your dash business. I put a really cool link that I found where you could search to see what licensing you need for your industry. So it's pretty cool. So if you don't know what licensing you need, you can go right there to the creditsuite.com forward slash setup dash your business. And on that page, I have a link. And, and excuse me, the page isn't fancy. I will tell you, it's something I put together for the purpose of the show. It's just literally tells you, click here to get 411, click here to do this. And none of those are affiliate commissions. Those are just links directly to the sources that you'll go to do this stuff so you don't have to go looking around to try to figure out these things on your own. Okay, so Dun & Bradstreet, there's a couple different ways you could build your credit profile with Dun & Bradstreet. The first one of these ways is called Credit Builder. And you can go right to their website, uh, dandb.com forward slash credit dash builder. So that's www the letter D um, and the letter B.com forward slash credit dash builder. So that's one way you can actually build your business credit is go through DMB's credit builder program. Now this runs $139 a month, um, or they'll also offer you a one-time fee that you can pay instead of paying monthly. And they'll even tell you, hey, look, with this one-time fee, you can get your DUNS number and all these other things included in that. Uh, just keep in mind, you never need to pay for your DUNS number. That always can be free, but they will roll that in and X expedite the time frame it takes to get your DUNS because the DUNS takes about 30 days by mail. They'll expedite the time frame and give you the DUNS right away if you're willing to buy this package or you could pay $139 a month for their actual credit builder. So they'll offer to set up again the DUNS for you if you purchase uh, without you needing to wait 30 days to get the mail. So whether it, from at, at this point in time, then that with you pay monthly or one pay with this credit builder, then what will happen is they will give you the DUNS like right away. Otherwise, they make you wait 30 days to get it because they obviously want to sell you the credit builder if they have the opportunity to do so. So with this credit builder, you get access to your DMB credit profile and scores, which is pretty cool, helpful. Um, you can add positive payment experiences to your report, and we'll talk a little bit more about that and then it slides to come. You'll get alerts when others inquire into your business and keep Keep in mind with business credit, anybody can look at your business at any given time. Okay, it's very cheap even to do so. So you need to control your business credit because anybody else can see it. And you can see how your company compares with others in your industry. You can even do an industry comparison, which is pretty cool with the Credit Builder program as well. So with Credit Builder, DMB allows you to basically add trade accounts you already have that aren't currently reporting to your actual DMB reports. So these accounts then show as a trade line helping you build your credit profile and score. So that's actually how that works. So this might be something to consider if you have a lot of accounts you pay now that can qualify and aren't currently reporting. So let me give you an example. We use a service called Infusionsoft. Infusionsoft is our CRM. It's like where we manage our customers and our clients and where we have our billing and our merchant accounts and all that stuff. It's our CRM. A lot of people use Salesforce or use you know any number of different CRMs, for example. So we pay Infusionsoft a monthly bill. We could go to Dun & Bradstreet as part of their credit builder and say, hey, Dun & Bradstreet, we want to add Infusionsoft onto our business credit reports as an account so we get credit. So like we can get a credit profile and a credit score established because accounts like Infusionsoft are added. They're not currently reporting. We pay them every month. We'd like them to report. So it's a good way for you to take accounts that don't currently report to the business credit reporting agencies and get them supplemented or added on the report so you actually get credit for the report um, and into your score because these accounts are actually added. So that's an example of how you can use uh, the credit builder program. Now keep in mind, this service only adds accounts to your DMB reports, not Equifax or Experian. Well, and that's a little bit of a problem. Even if you use Credit Builder, you can't only use Credit Builder and do nothing else because a lot of banks and a lot of credit issuers look at Experian or Equifax. So again, the purpose of this show today is to teach you how to build credit with DMB, but keep in mind the DMB Credit Builder program will do nothing to help you build credit with Experian or Equifax, only DMB. So even if you get into Credit Builder, you're still going to need to follow steps to build your business credit with Experian and Equifax. Also keep in mind, DMB isn't helping you access new credit. They're only helping you take existing credit that you have and add it to your credit report. So this is a big difference between what we do as a company um, and what 
for example, Dun & Bradstreet does. Dun & Bradstreet will take existing accounts you already have and add them to your credit profile and score and help you or help add them to your report to give you a profile and score. Um, like what we do, for example, to build business credit is we help people get real usable credit and then use that. And I'll show you how to do this in a minute. We'll walk through these steps. Add that real usable credit to the credit report. So you get a double benefit. You get credit you can actually use to like buy stuff in stores and stuff like that and build your business credit at the same time. With the credit builder program, you're just adding accounts you already have to your credit. You're not getting access to new credit. So just something to keep in mind because a lot of people I talk to aren't building credit just to build credit. They're getting, they want to build credit to have real usable money they could use um, in stores and Visa cards and MasterCards. So just because you're adding these accounts to your actual credit profile that you already have doesn't mean they're helping you get any new credit. As a matter of fact, Dun & Bradstreet and their credit builder does nothing to help you actually get real usable new credit. They can only take accounts you already have and supplement or add them to your credit report. Also keep in mind a lot of accounts that you may think about adding to your DMB credit profile, um, they won't let you add. They cannot add them. And I'll give you some quotes from this page, but here's where they break that down. It's www.dandb.com forward slash glossary forward slash trade dot references. Also, if you got that other link I gave you about how to get the credit builder program in the very, very bottom of the credit builder page, you'll see a link that's in their small print and that link will give you the information I'm about to show you as well. So from this page, dmb.com forward slash glossary forward slash trade dot references, DMB work, and this is a quote from that page, DMB works together with thousands of nationwide vendors that report payment experiences on a regular basis. These data providers have requested to remain anonymous and cannot be added by a customer for trade. So DMB is saying, look, there's companies we work with that want to remain anonymous and not be on the report. We won't let those ones be added. Uh, and continuing, some types of companies do not respond to DMB's request for information within a reasonable time frame. We'll make six attempts to contact a company um, that's been selected to provide trade references. So this is a big problem I hear with the credit builders that what happens is DMB is going to call, in my example, Infusionsoft. And say Infusionsoft, I know Credit Suite's your client. They want you to be added as a trade reference to the credit report. Let's talk about how to get that done. The problem is at Infusionsoft, my CRM company, there's only one dude that's going to be able to handle such a call. It's not like they have a whole division of people qualified to work with DMB to get an account added. So there's usually like one dude there and his name is like Fred. And then DMB calls, they need to get Fred on the phone. If Fred doesn't pick up when DMB calls and DMB leaves a message, from what I've heard, it's very difficult for Fred to turn around and get back in touch with DMB. So this is one of the, the, the things to consider with the credit builder is that part of the problem is that even though you can, in theory, get these accounts added, DMB has to connect on the phone with the one or very few people at that company that, that you want to get added. Um, and if that person at that company doesn't pick up when DMB calls, then there's a whole process that has to be gone through for DMB to typically call them back. Uh, and they're only going to try to do so six times and they won't add that account after that. So that is a barrier or something you at least want to consider there. Certain companies have proven over time to be less trustworthy according to DMB, um, has identified certain characteristics, blah, blah. So they're also saying, look, there's people that we don't trust that we won't let get added to your report um, either. And everything I put on the slide is wordy because it's quote from quote or it's quote from that website. So they're not going to let people that remain anonymous on the report, people that they don't want because they say are less trustworthy and they've got to get in touch with your creditor to even get added. Okay. Now, as I continue, there's also a list of companies that they will not let get added to the actual credit report. Okay. These include payments that have not yet been paid. Okay. And expected payments to businesses that have shared principles or some other type of legal ownership relationship, banks, credit unions, insurance companies, bank references, utilities, and gas companies, credit card companies, landlords, virtual offices, credit counseling or registered agents, international companies, none of these companies, they will let get added to a business credit report. So this is important. You need to think about what companies you may want to add before you pay for Credit Builder. Because if you can't add your, your rent, your landlord, you can't add your virtual address, you can't add credit cards, you can't add banks, you can't add international companies, you can't add any of your utilities, 
that eliminates most of the bills you have in a month that you'd even think about adding anyways. So this is some things to think about before you pay for the credit builder because there's a lot of things that get excluded. Uh, businesses with an unknown SIC code, which is a lot of companies as well. A lot of companies fit into a point where they don't have a specific SIC code. Those are excluded from being added to the DMB credit builder as well. So before you buy, think about the accounts you may want to add um, that you may want to get reported, such as your CRM or other types of software, okay, or other accounts that aren't restricted or on this restricted list. Also keep in mind, getting DB on the phone with that service provider isn't always easy. It can take time. This is not a simple, fast process. From what we've heard, people that go through the steps of adding accounts to the credit builder sometimes take many months to do so because they're just trying to get DMB with that actual service provider to even get them uh, to get added. So now that you've done this, now that you've went through and we've got your entity set up and we made sure that your business is set up credibly, okay, and now that we've went through and done, got your EIN and done everything up to the step, then now it's time to start building business credit, okay, even if you don't use Credit Builder. So you can also get new credit outside of DMB Credit Builder or on top of it. You can get Credit Builder and do this or do this in lieu of paying DMB hundreds or thousands of dollars for the Credit Builder. So you can also get new credit and use that to build your credit profile and score with DMB. You can do this quickly if you have good personal credit by obtaining accounts that can give you money now and also report to DMB. If you don't have good credit, don't worry about it. That's real business credit. I'm going to show you how to do that. But what I am going to tell you is that if you have good credit or a guarantor or signer, somebody that will sign for you that has good credit, well, then you can get all kinds of really cool unsecured business credit cards we call unsecured business financing that report to the business credit reporting agencies, build your business credit, get a lot of money right away um, if that's an option. So if that is, then you can go right there, creditsuite.com forward slash get funding, no link, just get funding, and you can apply. If you have good credit or a personal, good credit, personal guarantor, whammo, you can get money quick. Like as a startup, you can get 30, 50, 100, $150,000 as a startup just because you have good credit or a partner or a family member or a friend that's going to sign for you as a guarantor. Um, and not only will you get 30, 50, 100, $150,000 in money, even as a startup, but those report to the business credit reporting agencies. So you build business credit quickly and get a lot of money at the same time. But that option is only going to work if you have good credit, which a lot of people People don't. So I'm going to talk to you about that as well. So another way to build business credits by starting your profile and score with vendor accounts. Now, what I'm about to show you is pretty cool because first of all, you don't need to have good credit, good credit guarantor to get it. Secondly, you don't need to pay for credit builder to get it. Everything I'm going to show you now is where you can go and get this done without paying for credit builder, without having good credit or a good credit guarantor, just based on taking the steps, making sure you're credible, getting your EIN, et cetera, that we covered earlier, which won't cost you a ton of money uh, to get done. So these are companies, vendors who will offer you credit, even if you have none now, and they report to the business credit reporting agencies. So it's okay. You can use vendors to start your credit profile and score. You don't need to put your social security number on the application. They don't care about your personal credit quality because you're not putting your social security number on the application and they'll give you credit when you have no credit already. They'll offer you terms like net 30. That means if you spend a thousand dollars, then they'll give you, you know, 30 days to pay off that thousand dollars in full. Um, it's not a revolving account, but they do sell pretty cool stuff that you could often use. So of some vendors to start with um, who report to DMB and who will give you credit when you have none include uh, Seton, uh, Quill, Gimplers, Uline, um, and for real business credit linked to your EIN, not your SSN, don't put your social on the application. So I just gave you four sources, Quill, Uline, Gimpler, Seton. These are companies that will give you credit when you have none. They report to the business credit reporting agencies. You don't put your social security number on the application. So that means that you can get approved even if you um, have horrible personal credit because you're not putting your social on the app. So they're not even able to to pull your personal credit, but you got to leave that social security number off the application. That means you might have to call to apply and leave your social off, but don't put the social on there or they'll pull your personal credit and give you a personal guarantee. When you leave the social off, they'll give you credit without the personal guarantee, without the credit pull. You have to order $50 um, worth of stuff or more from them to be able to actually get approved or not, excuse me, you have to order $50 or more of items from them for DMB to report the account. 
So if you go to Quill and buy $30 worth of office supplies, then they won't report it because DMB won't accept it. DMB is only going to accept it if you spent 50 bucks or more. So you got to spend 50 bucks or more at these kind of companies. But when you go to Quill and apply for credit, they may deny you. You might have to buy $50 worth of stuff, come back and apply again. Then they approve you. Sometimes with companies like Quill, it might take the first, second, or third application to actually get approved. But they will approve you for credit when you have none. You buy $50 worth more of stuff, then they'll go ahead and report that credit that gives you a trade line, gives you a credit score, and gives you real credit you can use. Like Who doesn't need office supplies? These companies sell stuff that you could easily use. So you get credit you want that you can use to build your business, and at the same time, you're helping build your business credit because they report to the business credit reporting agencies. So DMB is going to want you to have two to three of these type of accounts to give you an initial credit profile and score. You do not need to pay DMB to have these added to your report. You could just apply, as we talked about, get approved, and get them reported without actually needing to pay DMB for the credit builder to add them. You just need to find items you wanna buy, apply for the credit, use that credit, and pay the bill on time and those accounts will report to the business credit reporting agencies. So now the main credit score used in the business world is the Paydex score, and it's provided by Dun and Bradstreet. And from DMB, the DMB Paydex score is DMB's unique dollar-weighted numerical indicator of how a firm pays its bills over the past year based on trade experiences reported to DMB by various vendors. So pretty cool here. Dollar-weighted means they weigh the stuff into the score heavier if it's got a higher limit. So if you have three credit limit credit cards, one for 1000 one for 2000 one for 3000 always make sure you pay the $3,000 limit card first because it calculates heavier end of the score. Okay, and also they're looking over what you've done over the last year. So even if you screwed up and messed up your credit years ago, you still have a good chance to rebuild because the Paydex score is ba based on mainly what you've done over the last year based on data that's reporting to them. So the score ranges from zero to 100. 100 the highest score. Score of 80 is good, healthy credit. And a business can obtain a good business credit score just by paying your bills on time. So that's why I'm explaining how the Paydex works because I said in order for you to get those accounts reported, you have to find $50 worth of stuff you want, apply for credit with a company like Uline, okay, then you buy that stuff on the credit, then you've got to pay the bill timely. Well, in the business world, paying the bill on time or early is what matters most because that's what the Paydex is based on. They want you to pay your bills on time. If you pay your bills on time or early, you get a good score. It's one of the beauties of business credit. You could build business credit very quickly, very quickly, because accounts only only takes 60 days to report and to get a really good score all you have to do is get accounts pay the bills on time then you have a good score then you can use that established score to start getting a ton more credit so here's the paydex score and here's an example of this 100 means that the payment's going to come early 90 means it's going to come during the early discount period 80 means you're paying as agreed. If you had a 30 score, that would mean you're paying 90 days late. So your score literally is depicted based on how you pay. If you get credit, use the credit, pay the bill on time or early, you get a good score. Then you use the score to springboard off of and start getting all kinds of cool credit that you want to have. So you should have pay five payment experiences to take the next step. You get these vendor accounts that give you net 30 terms. You need about five of those kind of accounts to move to the next step. Once you have that, then you can start applying for store credit cards without putting your social on the application. Most stores offer business credit, Staples, Office Depot, Lowe's, Home Depot, BP, Chevron, Best Buy, Apple, Dell, Walmart, Costco, Sam's Club, et cetera, et cetera. Almost all major retailers advertise business credit, although they don't promote it. Don't put your social on the application. Do not start applying until you have five accounts reported. A lot of people will come in and they'll say, Ty, I, I, I went to Staples and I applied and got denied. Well, how many trade lines do you have reporting? I have none. Well, that's why you got denied. Staples won't approve you for consumer credit when you have none established. They won't approve you for business credit when you have none established. You need to have five accounts reporting. When you have five accounts, then you can get credit with most major retail stores. Just leave your social off the application so you don't have that personal guarantee involved or personal credit check. And then with 10 total payment experiences, then you can start getting fleet cards and cash credit cards with Visa and MasterCard. And you also have a bunch better chance of getting loans and credit lines. When you have 10, you have what we call in the lending world a deep credit profile. It's well established. You have a good profile. You have good scores. That gives you a much better chance of getting approved for business loans. Um, even some things like auto 
leasing without needing a personal guarantee. And again, in some cases, you can obtain lending such as auto leasing without a personal guarantee once you've taken these steps and built up your actual business credit. So just like with consumer credit, this process never ends. You're, you're always going to be building your business credit. So the more credit you apply for and continue to apply for, the more you'll get approved for, the more you use that credit, the higher the limits become. So you start getting 10 and 20 and 30 and 40 and $50,000 credit limit accounts um, using Visa cards and MasterCards and store credit cards. You, you know, SBA says these limits on these cards are 10 to 100 times higher higher than you're going to find on consumer credit. And that's all possible as you continue to apply, get more credit, use the credit, pay the bill, and continue that cycle. Also keep in mind, all lenders review business credit when applying for business loans, even high-risk lenders. I have a stack of turndowns that people have sent me where they went to on deck or a merchant cash advance company for a 45% rate loan and they got denied because they have no business credit established. So not having business credit can easily get you denied for financing. So again, when you build your business credit, not only can you get vendor credit, store credit, cash credit as I've mapped out, not only is your chance of getting financing much better, but you're also going to get better terms. And just so you know, everybody's pulling that business credit for approval. And remember, anyone who wants to see your business credit reports can see them. It's very cheap to do so. Um, you know, a lot of companies, your competitors, your prospects, your clients, anybody who wants to buy your company, this is why you have to have business credit established because anybody who wants to can see your reports. And if you want to see your actual credit safe reports, you can go to our website. So we've got creditsuite.com forward slash free dash business dash credit uh, dash consultation. That's creditsuite.com forward slash free dash business dash credit dash consultation. We'll sit with you for 30 minutes. We'll actually review your credit safe report with you and go through it. We'll even physically give you your credit safe report so you can physically have a copy of your credit report. We can even do an Experian um, for you. We can't give you any kind of Experian report, but we can even do research on your Experian business data for you and give you an idea of what's going on with your Experian report. And we'll also physically give you a credit safe report as part of your consultation. So we'll sit with you, answer any questions you have about business credit. Um, we'll also give you a copy of your credit safe report at no cost. We'll even um, go through and talk to you about what's on your Experian report and your Experian data at no cost. Although we can't physically give you an Experian report, we can go through those details with you um, and give you a credit safe report. So that way you don't even have to pay to know what's going on your business credit report. Um, if that's something that you'd like to do, you definitely could do so. Um, we can even do an Experian and I already went over that with you review. So hopefully you got a lot of good information out of the show today. I mean, you now know everything that's involved from setting up your entity correctly um, to making sure your business is set up credible, to getting your EIN, to getting your DUNS. Um, you talked about two, a few to three different ways to build business credit. Using the credit builder with DNB, um, using somebody with good credit yourself or a guarantor to expedite it, get like 30 to 150 grand um, in financing. And this will be available on YouTube if you want to search our YouTube channel, Credit Suite, um, YouTube forward slash credit suite if you want to go back and reference this at any given time. Um, and if you attended, we should send you a playback as well. You can even go to creditsuite.com forward slash EIN, and that'll give you a guide that'll map out how to build your business credit. And if you have any questions along the way, reach out to us. You know, we're here to help. 877-600-2487, info at creditsuite.com. We'd, lo we'd love to help you in any way uh, that we can. We've even got a lot of cool products and services as well that will help you through this process with you work with our advisors. So we'll gladly talk to you more about that. But again, now you have everything you need to know to be able to go through and get set up with DMB the right way and start getting uh, cash and credit for your business. So I hope you enjoyed the show today. Hope you got a lot of great info. If we can do anything along the way to help you, reach out to us 877-600-2487, info at creditsuite.com. Thanks everybody. Have a great day.